Hey everyone, it's Dan from Voxel51, and I'm happy to bring you another tips and tricks this week, this time group data sets. This will be part one of a two-part series about group data sets, where next week we'll hop into dynamic groups data sets. Before we jump into that, let's build our foundation and understand what a group data set is. I highly suggest for this post and this tips and tricks to hop over to the blog if you're looking for more context as I break down group data sets a little bit more and if you have any questions or looking for more context, it might be a little bit more clear to you. If that's not enough, or if you're looking for something else, I highly encourage you to hop into the community Slack channel, which will be linked below into the description, where we're more than happy to answer any specific questions about group data sets, as well as other people that are working with group data sets that can give you some examples about how to get started. With, my, with all that aside, let's hop into it. Creating your first group data set is pretty easy. Uh, all you need to do is load a 51 data set like you normally do with our FO data set, create into memory. And then to make it a group data set, you just need to add the group field to it. You can see here, add group field. The default center, I'll get into a little bit more, but a group data set is gonna be a data set that it has sensor data, modality, media, uh, it could be images, video, point clouds even, we have a 3D visualizer, where um, it's maybe on a car, where you have a left sensor, a right sensor, and maybe a center center sensor. You wanna make sure that these data that was all taken at the same time is grouped together, that there is a relationship behind them, and we wanna represent to that in our data set. So once we've added our group field, we wanna add images to it. We'll define my groups first. We have left, center, right. I'm gonna use the 51 quick start data set as an example here. Now these images aren't related to each other, but it's an easy way to show if you have data in 51 already, how to put it into a group data set afterwards. So we'll randomly split this into equal portions for all our groups. We'll make sure that the tags are matched correctly and that we have the file paths in line for these. And then we're gonna just go ahead and zip that up so that our groups are matched with our file paths. We know where to find our samples and we know what group they belong in. Once you have this set up, we can iterate through this uh, list that we have. And then for each group, we'll create a new group, add our sample to it with the correct group on it, and then append it to our sample list that we're making right here. Once we have all our samples ready, we can then add these samples to our data set. This is nice too, because you can always go back and add more samples like this to your data set. It's not have to be a one-time thing. So if you're gonna add more group data to your data set, that's totally cool. Um, so let's go ahead and run through this code a bit. We'll run this. It'll load it through. And what we're looking for here is that our 51 data set has been created with this group field now added on. We can see that we have 66 groups. Let me go ahead and launch the session to see what this looks like. Now there's two things here that I wanna point out. One, if you look at our data here, click on this nice cat here, we can see our data is now grouped together where there's the left, the center, and the right images here. We can go through and see for each group the different images that are associated with it. Something that we're gonna get into a little bit more and we've touched on is the active slice that we're looking at right now. Currently, we're looking at the center sample of, all, of our group data set. These are all center pictures. If we wanna look on the left, these are all our left images. Same thing with our right, right. And you can change this within your 51 app but you can also change this within the code. And we'll hop into that and what that looks like. So maybe you wanna grab some basic information about your group data set. Uh, maybe someone has passed this along to you or you haven't touched it in a while. Um, it's good to get you know some basics before we get going. So we can look at our group slices like before we know we have left, center, and right. And we can see what media lives inside of them. Here it's only gonna be images for each one, but this could be videos or point clouds as well like I mentioned before. Now that we're ready to grab a sample, kind of our data set made, have our foundation, uh, you could grab a sample just like you would before in a 51 data set. Very important here, we have our group field down here, and you can see that we have the center here, right? So we've only grabbed the center image of our first group. We haven't grabbed all three images, just the center one. And we can see we have an associated group ID. That's because in a group data set, you can only have one active group slice at a time. A group slice makes up the individual samples in each group in that slice. Uh, another way to think about this is, you know, if your group slice is the left, you will see all the left photos. 
That way, whenever you grab any API commands or grab any samples, you'll only be grabbing left samples, not all of them. We can change this by uh, switching your active group slice. So if you want to go from center to left, for instance, we'll go to left. And you can see now that my, in my image has gone from center to left. I now have the left image. You can also see that this is changed within the data or the app here where we can now looking at the left images. Now, of course, your next question on your mind is, well, what if I want to grab all three? Well, that's not an issue. You want to make sure that like I pointed out before that you're grabbing that group ID. Then you can run the function get group with the group ID, and you'll be able to grab all three samples within your group. So whichever one fits your use case more, I highly encourage you for to use that. But both functionalities are there for you to use. Now, Let's switch up a bit. We're going to go use a quick start groups. This is much more indicative of what a group data set might look like in actual use cases. So we'll fire this up. And we'll see what our default group slice is. This time it's left. And we can see we have some car data here. And clicking into here, just like previously, we can see we have some new data here, right? We have our top, we have our left, our right, and we also have a point cloud here. So I'm going to switch out, go to my 51 app so I can get a better look at this. Go to my quick start groups data set. Click. We can see we have our data here, but we also have our point cloud on the left here. And we can see if you look closely enough and expand this all the different detections that we have within our point cloud. And this is a 3D visualizer that you can use. If you haven't looked at point clouds in 51 before, I highly encourage you to check out. We have some tutorials on our docs page that are super useful. But this is what a group data set might actually look like um, in your use case. So with that being done, we'll hop back to our notebook. So now we can start to jump into how are we going to view, how are we going to sort, how am I going to grab what I'm looking for in 51, right? 51 is great because it can house all this data for you, it can put a data set, give you interesting visualizations of it, but it's also very good because you can have these view expressions about how um, you want to grab certain images within your data set, especially in a group data set where it might be hard to parse through it. So using 51, uh, we can use all the same stuff from our 51 view expression language that is previous in all of our other 51 examples. So if you are familiar with 51 and views, this will look very familiar to you. If you haven't seen 51 views before, I highly encourage you to check out the docs. We have a tips and tricks on it as well, as well as, well as a YouTube video. So jumping into this, you can see our 51 views and you can do things like match tags, filter the labels. So I'm only going to get the training samples that have a pedestrian in the left slice on this image, right? So we can run this code. And you can see it works. This is only going to be on the left slice. You can also do compute metadata for doing things like different height of your data set and print that view. See, maybe I'm looking for very specific heights here and I know that they're not there. So maybe I need to add some new resized images here, right? Maybe my model is falling somewhere between 640 and 480, but my images are a lot bigger than that. So maybe I need to think about how I'm going to pre-process this or what my data set or model might look like. Another way to do it is you can look at things like your average bounding box sizes and what does the left bounding boxes look like compared to the right bounding boxes. So we can start to run this code and you can see things like there's 1300 detections on the left side, but if I look on the right side, there's 1100 detections. You can also do things like what's my average bounding box size on the left side. You can see it's 9000. Or you can do things like, well, what's my smallest and my biggest bounding box? And we can see our bounds here. We have our smallest and our largest on the right side. And once you get comfortable with this, you can start to get really complex and add these really nice and powerful view expressions that you're, to get insights into your data. Now, of course, you don't only have to work with one slice at a time. What you can do is you can flatten your slices. So here I can grab only my left and my right slice by using the select group slices. And this will create a new view that puts them all into one data set that's not grouped anymore. How do I know it's not grouped anymore? We can see our data set count beforehand has 200 samples in it, where there's left and right in both of these samples. And now that I have unfolded these, I have 400 damps, they're now in one data set together, and my detections have jumped up. Putting this all together, 
you know, you can start to get very powerful um, use cases out of your data, get powerful filtering, sorting. And what you can do for something, a nice, cool use case, is maybe I only want medium bounding boxes. I don't want to train on very large bounding boxes. Maybe there's a car right next to my car and it's the entire, you know, I don't, that's not going to, my model's not going to learn enough from that. You can start to do things like only sort bounding box areas that are less than half of my image. And you can see how many samples I have there. And you can see we have 86 different samples here, 86 different groups where my bounding box area fits my criteria. And, you know, there's so many possibilities of where you can take this. If you're familiar with 51 views and 51 sorting, I highly encourage you to take a look. Hop over to the blog, hop over to the 51 community Slack if you have any questions. Give us a star on GitHub. I hope you guys appreciate these videos, and I'll be back next week for dynamic group data sets and learn more about those. I hope you guys have a great week, great day, and I'll see you next time.